My learning curve, ZFS, on FreeBSD 12.1. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Right, I'm just going to boot up the test machine uh, with the USB device in the slot so I can uh, install FreeBSD 12.1. And we're going to be using ZFS as the preferred file system. Now, I normally choose UFS, and so that really means that over the time I've neglected ZFS from the videos. I do use ZFS. I have it installed on my, um, my network file server, but I don't touch the ZFS. I just let it do its thing, and I've never bothered to look into it, much to my shame. So... I'm going to do a few videos, uh, a small series as it were, where I'm looking into ZFS more closely. Uh, starting with this one, and this is just purely a installation video showing how to install ZFS en route um, as a straight install. I'll be going for the default settings, nothing fancy. So the first screen we get is install. And of course, you need to uh, just press enter. You can go into the shell or live CD, which I've covered in previous videos. But for this uh, particular video, we're just going to press install. Right, we're going to go into the key map. So I'm going to have to scroll down to UK. Just up a little bit. Right, okay. A little bit of lag going on. And we'll continue with the key map there. Choose a host name. I'm just going to put FreeBSD. I normally don't put caps into the title, but I will on this occasion. Right, what optional system components to install? Well, I don't want to debug in um, things. I'm going to put ports and source. I do that by default, personally. I don't. It's an old hangover I have, but um, I like to put that in. Like, deselect that. And that should be fine. Now this is what I usually go auto at UFS, but in this instance, auto ZFS. And that will set up a nice workable system. Right, ZF configuration. Most of these I can leave and, yeah, leave it on default. I'm not gonna to touch any of those. But I need to change the disc. It has non-selected at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to go for straight stripe, no redundancy, because there's only one disk. And there you are. I select that one. And there we go. And that is it. I know I could go into more details about choosing the options, but I'm just going to leave it on this for now until I get more comfortable. And yes. And that's pretty much it for the initial install. The install doesn't take a long time. It's not fantastically long, but I'm just going to skip uh, the long, boring part of extracting the uh, the files. There we go. Right, password. And type it again once that's done. Select the network device which is ethernet and ipv4 yes and dhcp select that one i could manually do it of course but it's much easier and quicker just to do this i don't want ipv6 the dns uh i have my own dns going but i will put in google as a backup Um, no, I'll, I'll just put it to, uh, I'll set it to my local time. Although I've heard that you should use UTC for servers, I'm, I'll look into that. You care? Yeah, it looks reasonable, and let's skip that because the time is right, and skip that. Services would like to start at boot. 
Uh, mouse, uh, update the time. Uh, I don't want dump dev. And I think that should be it. Yeah. And here's the hardening options. So I'll just uh, select that. Disable send mail. Disable syslog D. Clear temp. Hmm. Yeah. Add users. So you need to at least add one user. Ordinary user. So it's going to be Robo Nuggy. And full name, Robo Nuggy. You would never have guessed that, would you? I believe that as default. And that. And add at least a wheel. You could put operator as well, but just wheel at least. Login class. Now defaults, defaults. Again. And then a password. And password again. I'm just going to scroll down a bit because the screen is going to get full. Look after the account. No. Right. And that'll do. And I don't want to add another user. And that's more or less it. We'll just uh, apply configuration exit. And I don't want to make any final modifications. And reboot. Removing the USB stick, of course. All future videos where I'm doing tutorials or uh, installations or reviews, I'm going to be using the test machine and just simply screen capturing it. So uh, no more virtual box for me. I'll just boot up and once we're in, I'll just show you quickly the default ZFS um, file structure. df and there you go and that's pretty much the default zfs file structure on freebsd there's a lot of separate directories to hold the various knickknacks that you have and yeah it's pretty good so the next few videos i'll be just going into the ins and outs of zfs uh, basic stuff for those who know i mean you know i i'm not at all um, knowledgeable on ZFS as I should be really and so I'll be just uh, creating data sets deleting data sets and just overall um, looking at ZFS I think anyway thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time if you want to see more videos like this then hit that like button and to make sure you don't miss out please consider subscribing as this really helps me help you